pre-budget showdown, though, we saw a little bit of that in the House of Commons yesterday. Stephen Harper and uh, Thomas Mulcair did not hold back, accusing each other of selling out Canada on jobs as well as prosperity. But Chris Sims has more from Nova Scotia. Hi, Chris. Yes, yeah, very interesting to see uh, Thomas Mulcair and Stephen Harper uh, going after each other in question period over something that is near and dear to uh, Stephen Harper's heart, of course, the economy. And this comes hot on the heels of Thomas Mulcair's uh, much-talked-about trip to Washington, where he bashed the Keystone XL pipeline to Democrats and anybody else that would give him an audience. So that kind of struck at Stephen Harper, I think, as a bit of a betrayal, because Harper, of course, has been a big supporter of Keystone now for many years, going so far as to call it a no-brainer to be shipping raw bitumen down from the oil sands with a little cut through Saskatchewan into the United States. Now, as of late, Thomas Mulcair has had the very convenient answer to be able to say, well, I actually support value added. I want refineries started up in Canada with an east-west pipeline. Like you pointed out last hour, Pat, that would take years and years and years for that to actually be approved, considering the nimbyism, not in my backyardism, that goes along with many of these projects in Canada. So very interesting to hear them uh, tangling over the economy. Let's take a listen. We have created 950,000 jobs in Canada. What we understand in this country, on this side of the House, and what the leader of the NDP fails to understand is that trade with the United States is critical to creating jobs on both sides of the border. That's why we're for NAFTA, for trade, and for job creation on this side of the House, unlike the NDP. <laughs> Adding jobs by creating sustainable economy is the future of our country. If we don't learn how to add value to our natural resources here instead of shipping our jobs to the U.S., we won't get out of the mess they've created. There are 300,000 more unemployed today than there were when the crisis hit in 2008. That's the fact. So it's going to be even more raucous today because, of course, today is Wednesday. That's caucus day. That's when each party gets together in their own rooms and they basically have a big team cheer before they go into question period. And it's on the eve of a budget. So it's going to be even more feisty today, Pat. Entertaining, Chris, if nothing else. Very. Yeah. And at least it's of something of substance this time. You know, it's not some robocall weirdness. It's actually something involving tens of thousands of jobs, pipelines, energy, that sort of thing. So good to see a good old fashioned debate going happen going on in the House of Commons. And, and as you point out, I mean, that's the role of the House of Commons to get these things aired in public. So therefore, we can have budgets that fit what the public want and, and satisfy everybody. Exactly. And if we don't hear them in the House of Commons, we just wind up hearing them in 30 second ads, you know, from from different parties, at least in the House of Commons, you have the chance to be able to grill each other. And a lot of Americans actually envy our question period. If only the president had to be hit with a barrage of questions every single day from the opposition, maybe they might have better answers down there, too. Oh, Chris, we don't want to get into that process <laughs> argument ever. <laughs> But, no, it'll be a whole book after that. Oh, yeah, comparing <laughs> process, Canada and the United States. Dangerous ground, Chris. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Okay, talk to you soon.